Hello everybody. Welcome to Word Shard. Today we will be studying uh, a chapter written by R. K. Narayan. This is for the ICSE students who are doing the horse and two goats. The chapter is for them. And uh, even if you want to listen to it and you are not an ICSE student, still you can listen to it because it is a very beautiful chapter. And it is a little bit big, but uh, you know you will like it. Okay. And one more thing that I would like to say here is that all the ICSC chapters, English literature as well as language chapters, will be provided to you sequentially in my playlist. Okay. So let's start. First, before we start any chapter, we should learn about a little bit about the author. What is written about the author? R. K. Narayan was an Indian writer. who is best remembered for his stories set in the fictional south indian town of malgudi you will read a number of uh, works of his written in the uh, based on the town uh, malgudi and it is called the malgudi days you will read his works those are very beautiful and very sim in a very simple language he has written them narayan's style is simple easy uh, as i told you it is very simple easy unpretentious and his stories explore with humor and compassion there is a lot of humor you it they sometimes they appear funny and sometimes they are interesting there is a lot of compassion for people okay for one another all these things you will find in his writings so now in this story a horse and two goats what do we see narayan describes what happens when an english speaking american meets an illiterate south indian village what happens in the story an english speaking american obviously an american who speaks in english now this person meets an uh, a, a south indian villager who knows only tamil he doesn't know any other language except tamil and the american does not know any other language except english so there is a big problem in communication if you do not have a language which which it is which is known to both of your friends then you will not be able to communicate with them isn't it how will you communicate you can only do gestures otherwise you cannot the same problem these two people faced the foreigner with his english is baffled by the incomprehensible and bizarre behavior of muni while muni is equally mystified by the american's strange words and antics so whatever the american is speaking in his in his english he could not understand the tamil could not understand and whatever the whatever that old man muni spoke in tamil the american could not understand so both were amazed and awestruck about everything using the simplest of settings narayana has crafted narayan has crafted a sensitive yet amusing story it is a sensitive thing uh, it it has a number of meaning uh through the story we will see it and it is also very amusing rich in situational comedy in a situation it happens no sometimes at a particular situation fun is evoked we feel very amused seeing certain things in the road like that suddenly you will see something which will evoke laughter now we are coming to the chapter let's read it a horse and two goats r k narayan on the of the 700000 villages dotting the map of india kritam was probably the tiniest so kritam was probably the tiniest of the village of the villages uh, among all okay in india there are so many villages but among all those villages kritam was just like a dot in the indian map okay it was just like a dot tiniest indicated on the district survey map you do not topo map on that if kritam had to be marked it would be just a small dot microscopic dot but its size did not prevent its giving itself the grandiose name what do you mean by grandiose it had a very grand it has it had a very um you know very uh or awesome, something that is very impressive okay it had an impressive name kritam is a very impressive name what is the meaning of kritam kritam means in tamil coronet or crown what is a crown do you know the kings wear the crown on their head coronet is also a small type of a crown on the brow of the subcontinent so although the village was a, was a small tiny dot was very small village but it had a very grand name the meaning of the name was crown the village consisted of less than 30 houses so this can be a question how many houses were there in the village there were 30 houses only one of them built with brick and cement 
okay so there was only one house which was made out of brick and cement like our houses what were the rest of the houses they were paint uh, okay first we are talking about the uh, the big house that is the one which is built with brick and cement this house is a uh, is a house of you can understand this house is a house of a very rich man so it is made out of brick and cement it is painted brilliant yellow so it was yellow in color what else do we come to know yellow and blue it had two colors yellow and blue all over with gorgeous gorgeous carvings of gods and gargoyles gods you understood what is this gargoyles we will see a picture and you will be understanding this thing better see in this picture this is the think that this is the uh, house okay this is painted yellow and blue okay and these often we see you know in the rich houses in the zamindars houses we often see these kind of statues attached to the buildings these faces often look like you know those rakshas and those uh, those strange beings whose faces are very whose faces are uh, scary those are gargoyles so these things are the gargoyles so that big house which was made out of brick and cement had all these faces all these statues attached to the balustrade what is balustrade we will also see a picture of balustrade this is the balustrade this is it means the railing this is a railing you can see this one is a railing so beside the railings okay the outside of the railings had such figures of gods and goddesses attached to it okay so you can understand that this these people were very rich people okay next it was known as the big house now you will be asked the the description of this big house so you can say all this the other houses the rest of the houses which were not built out of brick and cement they were distributed in four streets so there were four streets and generally these houses were made of what they had thatched roofs you see no when you go to the village they have the thatched roofs the uh, the roofs of the houses or the tops of the houses are made of straw mud and very unspecified material just like the trash it is made out of trash any any holes are made inside it they just put maybe plastic or unspecified material to just guard their houses so that water does not enter into their house through the holes in the roofs so it is they are very poor you can understand only the poor the people living in the big house they were rich muni was the last muni's was the last house in the four street so just at the edge of the village where the village ends there muni's house was present beyond which that means after muni's house if muni's house is here then after that there starts the field after the field there is the highway okay you often see when you travel by the highway you see you no know, there are fields and in the far away uh, the uh, long distance uh, you you see that there are villages there are small small huts so after the highway this just beside the highway there is the field and after a little bit of field area there starts the village okay now in his prosperous days muni had owned the flock of 40 sheep so muni was once rich okay he had 40 sheep sheep sorry and goats also so he had 40 sheep and goats that sallied sallied means they used to he used to take his sheep and goats to graze okay so they walked forth every morning driving the flock flock to the highway a couple of miles away i told you that this is the field and muni's house was here so muni used to take his his goats and his sheep to graze in this field okay which was near the highway now what happened uh to the high okay there he would sit on the pedestal of a clay statue what he would do there he would sit on a on the pedestal of a clay statue what do you mean by pedestal pedestal means the base of a statue a statue is built right on the road we do not build a statue we make a platform a raised platform a stage kind of a thing and on top of that our statue is built so that raised platform is the pedestal so he used to sit there was a statue over a pedestal where was it it was near the uh, highway okay it was near the highway maybe over here and over it was the statue so he used to sit in this raised position on the pedestal okay if he sat on the pedestal he could see the road also the highway also from there it was a raised platform so he used to sit over there and look at the road and his cattle used to graze around he carried a crook what do you mean by a crook a crook means a hook okay often in the villages you would see that they have this 
uh, stick and at the at the end of the stick there is a hook okay from the hook they hang their food which they carry when they go out for work okay so they carry this on their shoulders while they go to work so he also had a hook now the end of the, the end of the bamboo pole and snapped foliage from the what is what do you mean by foliage foliage means the leaves so he used to uh, you know he used to uh, pull some leaves from the trees and uh, snap them and then feed it to his uh, to his animals okay to the sheep and the goats from the avenue trees to feed his flock that means he used to feed his flock feed his goats and feed his sheep by um, plucking leaves from the trees beside the road okay he also gathered fagots fagots means when you collect small small sticks so that you can use for fuel they used to burn those sticks for fire so that they could cook okay in the villages you will often see this so these are the fagots he also collected these small sticks so that he could carry them home and then they could be burnt so that they could cook the food for themselves and dry dry sticks also bundled them and carried them home for fuel at sunset then let's come to the next paragraph his wife lit the domestic fire at dawn so in the morning dawn means in the morning his wife used to burn the fire he used she used to boil water in a mud pot threw into it a handful of mille flour what is mille flour mille flour is a kind of cereal crop okay like uh, bajra and all that added salt he used to she used to add salt into this uh, cereal and gave him his first nourishment of the day so right in the morning his uh, wife used to get up used to boil some mille flour put some salt into it and that was his morning breakfast when he started out she would put in his hand a packed lunch even even when she, he was going out to graze his uh, flock of sheep and uh, goats then also she used to pack lunch what was the lunch same thing mele cooked into a little ball which he could swallow with raw onion he would go to his workplace he would sit there uh, under the statue on the pedestal and he would eat this when he was tired in the afternoon with the raw onion okay his fortunes had declined gradually so slowly slowly what had happened he had started becoming poor okay he no more had so many sheep and goats he did not have the flock of 40 sheep and goats whom he used to keep into a pen he he had a separate place to keep his sheep and goats so he had a huge number of sheep and goats we can understand how now how many sheep and goats he has let us move to the next part had now come down to two goats now he has only two goats okay which were tethered tethered means it was tied now now he did not require a separate place to keep his sheep and goats that is why he had he used to tie tether or tie his goats to the drumstick tree there was a drumstick tree okay in bengali you call it data gach which grew in front of his hut in front of his hut there was this tree it was not his tree he did not plant the tree but somehow it was growing over there so he used to tie his goats with the tree trunk okay and from which occasionally muni could shake down drumsticks sometimes when there was uh, some uh, uh, vegetables growing in the on uh, growing in the tree then uh, he, they used to uh, muni used to collect those drumsticks and bring it home okay so this morning he got six drumsticks he carried them in with a sense of triumph he was very happy because he had got some drumsticks he had got some vegetables free of cost and although no one could say precisely who owned the tree it was his because he lived in its shadow because he was living just beside the tree he felt that it was his tree and he could just uh, just pluck the vegetables and have it okay so he did not have to pay for it he just collected the drumsticks and came home his wife said if you were content that means if you were happy or satisfied with the drumstick leaves alone i could boil and salt some for you see these people are so poor that they can normally what do they have they just boil the leaves of this tree with some salt and have it that is their food because they do not have so many things to cook a curry isn't it we require so many things to cook a curry when we make chicken curry when we make vegetable curry we require so many uh, separate things for it isn't it masalas and spices and everything they did not have that they could not afford that so they just boiled the leaves with some salt and had it oh i am tired of eating those leaves now nobody likes to eat leaves isn't it 
I have a craving or I have a desire to chew the drumstick out of sauce. I want to, out of sauce means out of the curry. There will be this vegetable curry and he will have that vegetable curry. He is very much interested. He has a extreme desire to have that curry. Somebody who eats boiled leaves, just imagine. Obviously, he would desire for that. You have only four teeth in your jaw. That means you have only, he, he was an old man, isn't it? So he had only four teeth in his jaw, but your craving or your desire is for big things. Oh my God, you are old, but still you crave or you desire for tasty dishes. All right, get the stuff for the sauce. Okay, fine. You get the things that I require for uh, making a curry. I will require oil and other stuff. So you bring it, then I'll make it, I'll prepare it for you. After all, next year you may not be alive to ask for something. Next year you may be dead, isn't it? He was very old, so he might die the next year. So, okay, fine. I will prepare this dish for you if you bring me uh, whatever I require. So, what are the stuff? What is the stuff she requires? All the stuff. What are this? Rice or millet, to, uh, including a measure of rice and millet. Obviously, if you have to have some curry, you need rice or millet for it. You will have to uh, eat it with rice or millet, isn't it? So that he has to bring then. Then he, I will satisfy your unholy craving. What do you mean by unholy? Why is it unholy craving? Because he's an old man. Normally old people should not desire for tasty and spicy things. But still he desires. So that is unholy craving. Our store is empty today. That means there is nothing in the house. Okay, there is nothing to cook. Dal, chili, curry leaves, mustard, coriander, is dhania, gingerly oil. Okay, these things, one large potato, all these things I require to make the curry. Go and bring it from the shop. Go out and get all this. He repeated the list and after her, in order not to miss any item and walked off to the shop in the third street. Now he, like uh, your, when your father goes to the market, he goes on repeating the things. Okay, this, this, this things. I should not forget to bring all this. So he also tries to memorize all the names that he has to buy from the shop. Now he goes to the shop. Let's see what happens in the shop. Muni sat patiently on an upturned packing case. Now what is Muni doing? Muni, there is an upturned packing case. Okay. And Muni is sitting on top of it. Where? Beside the shop. He has no money. He has come to the shop just to buy certain things in debt. Okay. So, below the platform of the shop, he is sitting. The shopman paid no attention to him. The shopman was least bothered because the shopman also knew that he is not going to pay anything to him. So, he is least interested in the old man. Muni kept clearing his throat, coughing and sneezing until the shopman could not stand it anymore and demanded, what ails you? Now, he is constantly sitting on this upturned packing case and constantly he is coughing. Why? to draw the attention of the shopkeeper so that he looks at him and then he can just say, please give me this, please give me that. Okay. So ultimately, the shopkeeper's attention was drawn. He asks very irritatedly, what ails you? What is the matter with you? You will fly off that seat into the gutter, into the drain if you sneeze so hard. You are an old man. You are sneezing and coughing so loudly. You will, you will just throw yourself into the gutter, okay, into the drain. You will fall into the gutter. Don't cough so heavily okay muni laughed inordinately muni laughed inordinately inordinately means when you laugh a lot why is muni laughing he wants to flatter this shopkeeper so that through flattering by oiling the the shopkeeper he could get something out of credit out of uh, uh, just take the things without the money okay in order to please the shopman at being called young man so why is the man why is muni laughing because he is just trying to flatter the shopkeeper because uh, he wants to show the shopkeeper that, oh my God, your joke was great. You called me a young man. I'm such an old man. Okay. This completely won the shopman over. He liked his sense of humor to be appreciated. When you crack a joke, you want that people laugh at it, isn't it? So the shopkeeper also had cracked the joke that, Muni, you are such a young man. Okay. Now, when somebody laughs at it, he feels very satisfied. He feels that, okay, I'm appreciated. By thus humoring the shopman, Muni could always ask for one or two items of food. Now, this was a normal way by a, a, a normal way of attracting the attention of the shopkeeper and then trying to take something, promising repayment later. He never used to pay the shopkeeper for the things he would get from there. 
okay he used to say that okay tomorrow i will give you okay in the next day i'll give you and these things never ended some days the shopman was in good mood some days uh, the shopkeeper was in a good mood so he used to give him in credit some day he was not so he he did not give okay it depended on the choice of the shopkeeper here is a picture of this uh, of a hut okay of a village hut this is the thatched roof which you have in a hut okay muni's hut was far away from the village the village was far away muni's hut was the last one and after that there was the field okay and here after the field was the highway muni used to come a long way from his house to the field to graze his animals okay and from there he used to see the uh, highway and the cars that passed from the highway let's think that this is the old man who is very fond of uh, some food items okay he always wanted to have but he did not get because he was a very old man imagine such an old man being called a young man okay that is why muni started laughing let's move to the next page sometimes he would lose his temper suddenly and bark at muni for daring to ask for credit sometimes when the shopkeeper's mood was not right when he was uh, he was not in a good mood then he would behave very rudely with muni now today what is the day what happens today the shopman said if you could find 5 rupees if you just could provide me 5 rupees and a quarter that means 25 paise you will have paid off an ancient debt that means he had taken things in credit in a long time okay so he did not even pay he had so much debt that now there is almost no chance that he'll be able to pay all this debt it is not possible and that the shopkeeper also knows very well how much have you got now okay so how much money you have now that you have come to my shop to buy things obviously when you go to the shop you have money to buy so the shopkeeper asks okay to so tell me how much money you have got to purchase these things i will pay you everything on the first of the next month okay from the, in the next month the first date of the next month i'll pay you everything as always and whom do you expect to rob by then okay so you have no income then from where will you pay me the money you have you just have two votes that also does not give you anything don't do any bring any profit to you so from where you will get money to pay me next month muni felt caught and mumbled so muni did not know what to answer he said my daughter has sent word that she will be sending me money so suddenly he he makes up in his mind a separate plan he says that okay i have a daughter and uh, my daughter is going to send me money so the the shop man he says that okay then you have a daughter and she is going to send you money oh my goodness for what purpose may i know then please tell me why is your daughter sending you money everything is a lie okay soon you will come to know birthday 15 50th birthday so my 50th birthday that means the old man thinks that he is only 50 years old birthday how old are you so the shopkeeper uh, suddenly asks how old are you do you think you are 50 years old muni repeated weakly not being sure of it himself 50 uh, he himself was not quite sure whether his age is 50 or not okay so he always calculated his age from the time of the great famine famine means when you when there is a scarcity of food when when there is no uh, crops grown properly okay there is no rainfall so there is a famine so from that time from the great famine he is calculating his age okay when the famine took place the great famine he stood as high as the parapet around the village well what is a parapet let us see another image see this one is a parapet okay there is a this is the sides of the well okay the walls of the well now when the great famine took place he was just this much he was his height was this much so from that time he is calculating his age but what has happened unfortunately there has been a number of famines see such things accurately nowadays with so many famines occurring as there has been a number of famines taking place so he had confused himself he has confused his own age okay the shopman felt and encouraged when other customers stood around to watch and comment now everybody all the other customers have also come and they are also making fun of the communication between the shopkeeper and the old man they are also having a lot of fun out of it more likely you are 70 he said to muni so the shopkeeper says i think you are 70 years old not 50 you also forget that you mentioned a birthday 5 weeks ago just 5 weeks ago he had come to the shopkeeper asking things in credit 
okay he could not pay and what reason did he give he said that it is my birthday and i need castor oil for my holy bath okay this is my birthday so i require oil so you please give me out of sympathy so just and and this old man has forgotten that he had given the same excuse so you don't have your birthday just after 5 weeks isn't it so that is a lie at this muni unobtrusively that means unobtrusively means that unnoticed he just rose and moved off now the old man had understood that this shopkeeper is not going to give me anything today so he is very sad he gets up he later told his wife that scoundrel would not give me anything so go out and sell the drumsticks for what they they are worth so now he is disgusted he feels then i'm not going to have my drumstick sauce and drumstick curry so just sell those drumsticks away what will i do with the drumsticks okay he's very unsatisfied with it he flung himself down in a corner to recoup recoup means he has walked all the way to the shopkeeper to the shop then uh, he's an old man no see he has become tired so to recover from this tiredness fatigue of his visit to the shop he lies down his wife said you are getting let's move to the next part you are getting no sauce today so he says that uh, so the wife says you are not go- going to get any uh, curry today so nothing you will get nothing not only that you will not get curry you will not get anything because there is nothing in the house i can't find anything to give you to eat there is nothing that i can give you to eat they are so poor fast fast means it is not to run fast it is when you do not uh, have anything do not eat anything for a long time you fast so don't eat anything till the evening it will do you good you are old you should not eat much so it is good that you are starving take the goats and be gone now just go away from here she cried and added don't come back before the sun is down so you don't come back to your house before it is before the sun sets okay just stay stay there he knew that if he obeyed her she would somehow conjure up conjure means she would do something like a magic spell or something that he would bring food for him anyway at night he is going to have some food maybe his wife will do some scrubbing or sweeping in some house so how will he how will the wife manage for food only he must be careful not to argue or irritate her so if his wife becomes angry then his wife will not bring him food so her temper was undependable in the morning in the morning she is always angry so it is better to avoid her and go to work okay but improve by evening time time in the evening her temper develops her temper cools down so it is better to come back in the evening time and by that time she is sure to go out and work she will surely not sit in the house she will go and work she will grind corn in the big house so how did he how did she earn the money she would grind corn in the big house sweep or scrub somewhere she would sweep or scrub the floors and do something so that he she get paid and earn enough to buy food stuff and keep a dinner ready for him so in the evening she, he is going to find some food his wife is surely going to manage something he knows that so what did he decide he decide decided to take his goats uh, to graze okay so unleashing the goats from the drumstick tree muni started out driving so where were these goats tied it was they were tied to the drumstick tree so he uh, releases the goats from there and started driving them ahead and uttering weird cries from time to time in order to urge them so her her you don't know when you have to move your cattle like that he, he was also doing to his cattle he passed through the village with his head bowed in thought he was thinking okay he was thinking he was hungry so he was not interested in talking to anybody he did not want to look at anyone or be accosted he did not want wanted to look at anyone or uh, talk friend uh, talk in a very friendly manner with anybody or be mocked at he did not want all this so a couple of cronies cronies means his close friends were sitting lounging means they were sitting at the temple corridor they were sitting near the temple and they called muni but muni did not pay any attention to them because muni was not interested muni was hungry and not satisfied enough now we move to the next paragraph the shop man had said that he was 70 at 70 only one waited to be summoned by god the shop man had said that at this age uh, the old people wait to be called by god wait to be dead when he was dead what would his wife do now as he walks to the field he thinks that what would happen when he is dead what would happen to his wife when he is dead he had been told on the on the on their day of wedding that he was uh, 
that he was 10 years old and she was 8 when these two people were married when muni and his wife were married muni was 10 years old and his wife was only 8 so progeny none progeny means they had no children of their own so that one that his daughter was giving him a birthday gift that one is a lie understood they had no children perhaps a large progeny would have brought him the blessings of god he he had a you know traditional belief that maybe i do not have children and that is why i am so unlucky that is why i am so hungry i don't have money to feed myself okay he felt that children are uh, are the blessings by god so i did not get that blessing so that is why i have to starve my wife has to work and starve next we move to the next paragraph only on the outskirts did he lift his head and look up now when he reached the, uh, the edge of the village the village ends here there is the field okay and then the highway starts okay so when he reaches the end of the village over here then he lifted up his head he urged and bullied the goats until they meandered along to the foot of the horse statue on the edge of the village so where did he go he went close to the statue he is going to sit on the pedestal on the you know on the on the pedestal of that statue and uh, his goats will graze he sat on his pedestal for the rest of the day that vantage of this world he could watch the highway and see the lorries and buses pass through to the hills and it gave him a sense of belonging to the larger world so now let us see another image so that it is clear to us see let us think that this is the highway okay this is the highway this is the field where the goats used to graze okay this is a very arid field uh, dry field okay where there is no rain uh, there is no vegetation it becomes dry the grasses are also dried up so here is this uh, this thing the field and far away there is the pedestal on which there was the statue okay so muni used to sit on top of the pedestal and from there he could see what he could see the highway he could see all these buses and trucks that used to pass okay he used to be a part of the greater world i think this is clear the pedestal of the statue was broad enough for him to move around as the sun traveled up you will see we'll come to this image soon and westward so as the uh, the sun used to come up as you know the sun in the morning it how does it move it moves from this way it comes to the top the sun it comes to the top then again it sets in the west isn't it so this full this full direction what did muni do all this all along the day he used to sit on the pedestal over here okay he used to sit in such a way so that from whichever direction the sun's ray used to fall on him he used to cover himself up under the statue the statue was big enough he could hide himself from the sun's rays over there now we will give you a description of the horse and the master let us see it the horse was nearly life size the horse was huge molded out of clay it was made out of clay baked burnt and brightly colored it was very bright in color and reared its head proudly its head was proudly uh, see the head was held high it was held high proudly the tail was in a was like this okay in the image it is not shown properly but the but the tail was this okay next what else is given prancing its four legs in the air so its legs were in the air and flourishing its tail in a loop beside the horse stood a warrior with scythe like mustachios bulging eyes and aquiline nose now again we will see it see what description is given the legs are raised okay the 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 front legs are raised up the head of the statue was held high the the, uh, the tail was in a loop and this man had scythe like mustachios have you seen a scythe it is used to cut the crops so that kind of mustachios he used to have and he had an aquiline nose what do you mean by aquiline nose aquiline nose means uh, nose like an eagle's beak okay and he was also standing beside the uh, the horse okay 
the horse itself was said to have been as white as dhobi washed sheet and had had on its back a cover of pure brocade of red and black lace matching the multicolored sash around the waist of the warrior but none in the village remember the splendor as no one noticed it its existence so once more we'll move to the picture to understand one more thing that you you have often seen that the horses have a kind of brocade that is placed on its back okay this was very richly decorated and made out of rich cloth and its color matched with the lace that the this uh, this man had this brave man had around his waist they these colors were also matched with one another now nobody paid much attention to this but none of the villagers remembered the splendor uh, and no one noticed its existence or people had almost forgotten the uh, the statue even muni who spent all his waking hours at its foot never bothered to look up he used to sit below the statue but he never used to look up and see the statue it was untouched even by the young vandals vandals means all the village boys you know who uh, make a lot of nuisance they uh, they are they cause a lot of trouble okay so they often topple milestones milestones topple means they often throw over the distort or or um, disfigure them topple of milestones and inscribe lewd designs lewd design means vulgar designs on all the walls this statue now the, even these children could not destroy the statue because they had completely forgotten the statue these children often destroy the milestones and everything but they did not do anything to the statue the statue had been closer to the population of the village at one time when this spot bordered the village once upon a time the statue was very close to the village okay but now the statue has been in the same place but the village has moved away from it okay so now in between there is a huge field so muni sat at the foot of the statue now muni was in the same way sitting at the foot of the statue watching his two goats his two goats were grazing so he was watching them in the arid soil that means in the you know uh, it was not fertile at all it was dried up soil in which there were small small little bit of dried up grasses the the goats were grazing on them only so he was watching them from the uh, from the pedestal of the statue among the cactus and lantana bushes lantana is another kind of shrub okay he looked at the sun it had tilted westward so the, slowly the sun was in the process of setting but he could not go back home then because if he went too early his wife would have no food for him if he went very early back to his home then his wife would be very angry and he and she would not prepare food for him also he must give her time to cool off her temper and feel sympathetic and then she would scrouge scrouge means he would surely do something and find some food from somewhere and give it to him but he should give her time to feel for him to feel sympathetic towards the old man and then he will uh, then she will surely manage food for him he noticed now a new so while he was sitting over there there i already told you that it was a raised platform so from there when he sat over there he could see the highway so there was a sort of vehicle that was coming down at full speed it was coming at a very high speed it looked both like a motor car and a bus i'll show you this kind of a car he used to be intrigued he used to be intrigued means he was very curious about these vehicles okay new types of vehicles normally we don't see it in villages we see only carts isn't it so uh, he used to see all those beautiful cars that that travel through the highway and the novelty of such spectacles but of late work was going on at the source of the river on the mountain and an assortment of people and traffic went past him so because there was some work going on near the mountains and the river uh, on the mountains so a huge number of people and cars and uh, trucks and everything was going up and down so he got used to it but this was a strange kind of vehicle and he took it all casually and described to his wife later in the day everything he saw so normally from the previous part of the story we feel that the wife and the husband the uh, this muni did not have a good relation but they did have a good relation when muni went back home he used to talk gossip with his wife about all the beautiful cars and trucks that he has seen today while he observed the yellow this is the milestone okay i have a picture for it this is the milestone and uh, mm, uh, the village boys often destroy them break them okay so 
they are called the vandals who do such things this is the station wagon this is the car that muni suddenly saw it looks like a car but it is also like a bus it has a lot of space behind okay so this is the station wagon which he saw while he was sitting on the pedestal the vehicle was coming down he was wondering how to describe later to his wife when it sputtered and stopped in front of him sputtered means it made a lot of sound and suddenly it stopped with a jerk next a red faced foreigner who had been driving it this man a foreigner this is that american we were talking about when we were reading about the writer this american has now come here he was driving the car his car had stopped working so he uh, went round it stooping looking and poking under the vehicle he straightened himself up looked at the dashboard stared in muni's direction and approached him so we can understand that his car had uh, malfunctioned and he uh, did not he could not find a petrol pump nearby so he suddenly saw muni and he was coming to muni to ask about a petrol pump or a gas station so he comes to muni and says excuse me is there a gas station nearby or do i have to wait until another car comes he did not finish it suddenly he looked up at the clay horse and cried marvelous now obviously this word was said in english so the man muni could not understand what what it was he suddenly heard the red faced the white man screaming at the top of his voice so that made muni very afraid without completing his sentence muni felt suddenly what did muni see muni suddenly saw that this american had got down from his car he was coming to his direction and suddenly he shouts and comes running to him okay why was that man running to him because suddenly he has seen the statue it was a very beautiful statue so he was awe struck he was amazed and he comes running to the statue but muni thought that the american was coming to him to catch him he was perhaps a police or something he wanted to get up and run away and cursed his age why did he curse his age because he is so old that he cannot get up and run he could not readily put his limbs into action he was so old that he was not like a young boy or a girl like you okay so he could not just get up and run so he was very sad that now this policeman is going to come and catch hold of him and take him or do what whatever with him he, he had no idea but he was very afraid so we will stop till here in the next class this is a very big story but you will obviously like it this part is done in the next part we'll again do the second part of it second part of the chapter okay i hope this part is clear and i could make it easier for you uh, easier to you uh, by the use of this uh, beautiful pictures that i have placed in between so i hope you have liked it and if you have liked it please comment subscribe and share thank you so much